Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to extend what we learned in previous videos of adaptive control to higher order nonlinear systems. Remember that I talked about first order linear systems, then we extended to first order nonlinear systems, then we extended to higher order linear systems. So now we're going to go to higher order nonlinear systems. Okay, that is the topic of this video and stay tuned on Thursday. I should publish the adaptive control for a robot specifically. So we can cover a bunch of relevant videos for adaptive control and hopefully after that we can move on to other controls including digital control and hopefully at some point robust control. So I can have a bunch of different videos for controls for you. So the system we are going to focus on is single input single output and it has full state feedback okay so it should have some properties uh, we cannot say that adaptive control theory is extended for all sorts of nonlinear systems for specific categories of nonlinear systems that we're going to see we can uh, basically have adaptive control so first thing is it's siso second thing is it has full state feedback third thing is the equation of motion is linear in parameters and fourth is the nonlinearities can be canceled stably if you know all the parameters or you can estimate them. So the system has to be stable. You know, in nonlinear systems, the system can easily become uh, unstable and uh, analysis of stability is not as easy as uh, looking at some eigenvalues or something, right? Okay, so the equation of the system is given by this equation one or this... Um, previous one that you can see here the highest order derivative can be written in terms of basically all uh, previous or, or lower order derivatives as well as time and of course uh, the input or if you divide both sides by uh, b the governing equation is going to be this where h here is the coefficient of the uh, highest order derivative plus a bunch of um, nonlinear functions f where we know what kind of function they are okay this parameter a that are multiplied these coefficients of them we don't know and also this h that is multiplied by y highest order derivative y to the n and th order derivative and the vector x that you can see here is clearly a vector of the function and all uh, uh, derivatives up to n minus 1 Okay, and it could also be a function of time or no function of time. Now, uh, in order to analyze this, we define again a combined tracking error as we define for a first order system, which is the uh, error, and here error is the tracking error y minus y desired, or y minus y m, if it's m rack. And uh, basically, this combined tracking error is composed of uh, the error all the way to the n minus 1 derivative of the error with some coefficient lambdas such that the polynomial from the, the characteristic polynomial for this equation 2, this uh, characteristic polynomial with these lambdas is a stable or a Horvitz polynomial. So we have to pick this lambda such that the characteristic polynomial of 2 is Horvitz or is uh, basically stable. Okay, yeah. Another way that you can also define this S, remember this e to the n minus 1 is clearly y to the n minus 1 minus y desired to the n minus 1. Right, and plus all these other terms. This is S. Now, if you go ahead and basically define this second portion as y reference y r n minus 1 where of course these positive coefficients should be negative now so that that negative of them will make the whole thing positive then you can also write s as y n minus 1 derivative minus y this guy called y reference n minus 1 derivative where of course as i said 1 n minus 1 r is y d n minus 1 minus all of these lambda terms okay so you can also write it this way so here also in 3 we have the definition of the reference uh, output or the reference for the uh, nth derivative output good now we can show that if we know all the parameters 
if we know the H and the, I, the A's all perfectly, then picking a control signal based on equation 4 will definitely lead to zero tracking error. How? So what is control 4? It clearly has this um, H times, the same uh, gain that was multiplied by Y to the N. You multiply it now by Y reference to the N minus k times s okay so this is kind of like a proportional term plus all of these other terms which are used to ideally what cancel this guy okay so if u is picked based on four then this a's would cancel these a f's okay so what you will end up with is basically so from one and four if you take a look you'll get basically uh, h y n is equal to h y r n minus k s and based on the definition that we had y look here right if you look if you take a time derivative from this then clearly a stat is y n minus y r n which is exactly uh, basically uh, if you take a if you bring both of these terms to the other side, you get like this. And so this portion here is going to be H times S dot. So your equation, the error dynamics equation is going to be H S dot plus K S equals zero. And clearly, as you know, the solution to this, if you picked H and K properly is S goes to zero. Now, the only condition is this constant k, this proportional k, has to be a constant, but with the same sign as h. So, the characteristic root here, you know, the root of this is s equals what? Negative h over k. Correct? So, when both they have the same sign, then the root is clearly negative. So, that means s of t is going to go to zero. Let me not call it s. Let me call it something else. Oh, the root. Okay, so then S is going to be something like S at 0 times E to the negative R times T, and clearly it is going to go to 0, as I said. Good? So um, clearly you see that if I know A's so that these nonlinear terms will cancel the other ones and the coefficient of this YRN and YN are the same, then clearly uh, control law 4 would definitely... Uh, will make the system to go to zero and s is zero and if you look at s when s is zero means y n is going to y n minus one is going to be the same as y r n minus one or if you look at the s in equation two when s is zero and a stat is zero that means all of these e's and their derivatives should be zero so you get y to converge to y desired or y of the model right but the problem is your parameters h and the a's are not known so the control law that you pick is exactly like 4, except these A's and the H that you had, now you put a hat above them because you have estimates of them. So you're going to use um, control law 6. If you plug in 6 now into um, basically 1 and simplify, now it's not going to be HS uh, dot plus KS equals 0. It's going to be HS dot plus K equals some right-hand side term where the right-hand side you have h tilde times y r to the nth derivative and plus summation of i from 1 to n of a tilde, a i tilde, uh, a i uh, tilde times f i, where the definition of a i tilde is a i hat minus a i and h tilde is h hat minus h, the errors in estimation of parameters. Or if you want to write this in a... Um, in terms of the differential uh, operator P, remember P we defined earlier, P is the time derivative operator, then you can write your aerodynamics equations as 1 over H over P plus K over H times here. Clearly, if this whole bracket term, inner bracket term is 0, then S is going to go to 0, but not necessarily unless uh, we force, as I said, this whole term to go to 0. So for that to happen, we need to pick some adaptation law. We need to know how to change H hat and AI hat. And based on the MIT rule that I told you, you can see why we pick the um, adaptation laws based on eight. If you look here, we have this gamma. 
okay? If you have the gamma times sine of h times s and times what? Times fi or yr. And what are these? Well, here, if you take partial of this s with respect, s here is the same as error. So remember the MIT rule? It was negative gamma times e, right? Okay, times partial of e with respect to that parameter, whatever it was, correct? And here, the sine of h we just add, so we guarantee the convergence if h is negative. So this e here is replaced by s. So we use the combined tracking error instead of the simple tracking error. So we have s, we have gamma with negative. That sign is, as I said, added for uh, making sure the system is working for positive or negative h. And uh, here, partial of s, if you look here, partial of s with respect to h tilde is clearly that y r, right, to the n. Okay, so that's this guy. And if you want partial of s with respect to that ai tilde, clearly you can see that that is fi. So that's why you have this fi here and you have the yrn. Okay, so that is all based on the MIT rule. And uh, you can show that if you pick control law 6 with adaptation law 8, then definitely your system will converge to zero tracking error. How you have to pick a Lyapunov function. In this case, Lyapunov function is this function here, clearly bigger than zero. As you can see, it is based on the tracking error as well as what the parameter estimation errors. And uh, if you use the laws in eight and the equation of the system, you take a time derivative and guess what? You should be able to show that uh, the v dot is equal to zero and it's quite clear because here the derivative of this term is going to be two magnitude h times s s dot correct and here you're going to get h tilde h tilde dot and a i tilde a i tilde dot and remember based on the definition here you can see that h tilde dot and h hat dot are the same because h dot is zero and uh, ai tilde hat and ai tilde dot uh, ai tilde dot and ai hat dot are also the same because ai dot is also zero so you have to pick for these you have to pick the uh, laws in eight and of course for this part you are going to pick uh, this portion here. Okay, so clearly you can see what is h times s dot. It's gonna be basically all of that and minus negative k times s. And you write it down here from seven, so you have to plug in seven and eight. The tilde terms would cancel. You're gonna get negative two magnitude k s squared, which is clearly negative, and that is going to make sure that the error is going to converge to zero, the combined error. Okay, so as an example, we're going to look at mass spring damper system. This time, the damping is due to air drag, not due to a uh, viscous damper. And uh, the equation of motion is clearly what you can see down here. So my uh, damper uh, function is nonlinear. And if you compare it against the uh, equation one, you can see that M here is the same as H. And then this C is like A1. And this uh, Y dot squared is like your F1 function. And this K is like your A2. And this Y is like your F2 function. Okay, so one of the F's is nonlinear. One of them is linear, but that's enough. Now, if you want, you can make also this y to be like a cubic uh, nonlinear spring, but you have to pay attention that the system should be stable. If the system is not stable, guess what? Your adaptive controller is not also going to work. Okay, here is the Simulink model, and you can see that I wrote the functions. This is my model. This is my uh, actual system. And they are very similar, except that the model has a, a quite bit smaller damping coefficient or like air drag coefficient compared to what? Compared to the actual system. 
and uh, here is my adaptive controller where um, the laws are exactly what you can see now here you see I left for you this constant if you want to change it so that f2 the y function also becomes nonlinear you can do that but um, again you have to make sure first your system is stable so you see I'm using a power function but I'm using power 1 but feel free to change it just make sure that uh, your system does work and the lambdas I chose is such that my polynomial is a Horvitz polynomial with lambdas the one for the error and here you can see that all of these um, a1 2 hat, a, a1 uh, hat dot, a2 hat dot, and h hat dot are all uh, basically calculated. The initial condition for them are different from the actual parameters of the system. For instance, this one is 4 here, we assume it's 3. This one is uh, 1, we assume it's 0.5. And this one is 2, we assumed 1. So you see we are quite a bit off in our estimation from M, C, and K. And the initial condition also of the system is different from the model. So uh, here we can use either a, a harmonic or a constant for the system to see whether it drives the tracking error to zero as well as the estimation of the parameters would they converge to the actual values. So here is with um, the harmonic one. If you double click on the error, you clearly can see that the error is going to zero and with some small oscillations, or if you look Y versus YM, you can see that you see here, they are starting from different condition, one from 0.2, one from 0.4, even different speed, right? One is positive, one is like zero or negative. And over time, the gap between them is diminished. So now they are on the top of each other for this. And look here, your input is a simple harmonic, but look at the output is like a double harmonic. It's, it's not even a simple double harmonic. So the nonlinear system behave completely differently, right? The output is not just a, a version of input with a bigger or a smaller amplitude and with a phase shift you get a different response for what for even a simple harmonic that's why control of nonlinear system is harder and adaptive of that is even harder but you see that it is working and uh, if you look at the parameters you see that they are also converging to the right values the 0.5 is converging to 1 the 1 is converging to 2 and the 3 is converging almost to 4 Okay, might need a little bit more time, but they are converging and doing their job. But if you change the um, uh, input to the constant and let it run for a bigger time, let me go for 200 seconds and run it again. You see that you're going to get zero tracking error. Look, you see, it is working. You definitely get zero tracking error. Now here, look, the input of the system is constant. You expect the output to converge to a constant, but look the output, the output is oscillating. Okay, so um, uh, that seems, that shows like a limit cycle behavior basically here, right? And um, if you look at the hats, you see that the 0.5 is converging to one, the one is not exactly converging to two, and this one is uh, passing four, basically.